Wild Global Forest Link at the Rancho Penasquitos Canyon Preserve, you can see here. Um, I wanted to point out that on this sign at the beginning of the preserve, it says, help protect this natural resource. I think that that speaks really strongly to everything that we're doing here at Mount Everest in our science programs, and especially in environmental science this year. So the Los Penasquitos Canyon Preserve is a little bit north of Mira Mesa for Rancho Penasquitos, and it's in a little bit of a valley, and there are two mesas on top, so that's a little bit about the area. So you can learn a lot about a natural area by looking at it objectively. So we can see here that there's a lot of you know, healthy trees. There are some what we think of as traditionally drought tolerant plants of our California landscape. There's also um, a creek, the Penasquitos Creek, running through this area. So there is a lot of greenery and overall it is a pretty healthy forest. And um, it's, it's really nice. It's an area that a lot of people go to for recreation. But like a lot of our areas right now, they are definitely uh, challenges of the Penasquitos Canyon Preserve. Um, so one thing that you can see there is, is logging. There are some trees that have been cut down. You know, uh, It's possible that some were cut down because they were diseased and the preserve, which is a protected area, was cut down by, by rangers. There was also a, a ranch here that uh, at some point people would have used to cut down for firewood and things, but there are some areas that look like there have been logging pretty recently. Um, uh, not widespread, but there's definitely some areas where a lot of trees have been cut down. Um, also, as most people know, there's a lot of drought here in California right now. That presents a real fire hazard, especially in our natural areas, because if a fire uh, starts, it's really easy for it to take off and become uh, very widespread very quickly. So you can see a lot of dry underbrush there at the canyon. There are some dying trees, but not so many that would be worrisome. You know, any, any natural area has some dying plants because that's just the cycle of life. So there are some dying trees to be seen, but not so many that it's a problem. Um, also another problem here is, is poison oak. You know, nobody likes poison oak, but it's especially a problem here with trees because you can see that like it really takes over the trees. It can suffocate them. Um, because it grows up from the ground and if it gets to the trees, uh, it, it causes them to die. So you can see this tree is dying and all the poison oak has come up and it's uh, taking over the tree. So that's a problem in some areas in the preserve. But um, overall, there is a lot of health in the forest. You know, you can see here there's the, the stream and it's pretty healthy. There's a lot of greenery on, around the stream. And also here is like a new, a new oak tree. There are some new growing trees there at, at the preserve um, in the smaller in the underbrush. Um, another way we can, we have lots of other ways we can learn about the forest uh, other than just looking and examining uh, with our own eyes. One great resource that we learned a lot about through Global Forest Link is Global Forest Watch. Uh, it's a great resource that has data from crowdsourcing, from scientists, and you can learn a lot about a natural area, and I'll show you some data from them later. Uh, Google Maps uh, satellite imaging has a, you can tell a lot by taking a step back and looking at the at the natural area. You can see the Penasquitos Creek here and the canyon. And I think what's really powerful about this image is, is really like the degree of urban sprawl and anthropogenic impact everywhere around the canyon. You know, even before there were all these houses here, there would have been some contrast between the greenery near the creek and the more arid areas on top of these mesas, you know, uh, Mira Mesa and Penasquitos. Uh, but it's really very, uh, there's a lot of contrast here between the areas that we are protecting and just everywhere else, which is, we've just taken over. Uh, here's a, an image from climate.gov, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of drought. You can see here in San Diego, we're in extreme drought. It's not an exceptional drought as we are uh, elsewhere in the country, uh, especially up the coast a little, but that's really contributing to the health in our natural areas. So here's some images from Global Forest Watch. You can see here the tree cover, it really mirrors that satellite image from a, a few slides previous. Uh, so there's some tree cover over around and you can again see all the streets and the suburban areas that are, are around the, the creek. Also, this is a, a really interesting image. Uh, you can see the tree cover gain in lots. There are some of these little dots of, in blue that show the gain and then a couple more in pink. But really overall, we haven't gained or uh, lost any tree cover in this area. So the areas that we are protecting, we're doing a good job of maintaining them. Um, but there just isn't really enough left, especially in this area that we are protecting. Uh, here also you can see that most of San Diego 
is a recognized biodiversity hotspot because uh, we just have such ecosystem diversity and there's some nearby protected areas, although the canyon itself isn't recognized by Global Forest Watch. So we can conclude from the data and from um, just really looking at the, the forest that it's pretty healthy. You can see there's a lot of, there are some new trees, it's growing, it's, it's healthy. There are uh, some really, uh, some native species that are really uh, doing well, especially a little bit outside of the creek. There's really healthy soil, you can see here, uh, especially by the creek, the creek is running, it's, it's making a lot of healthy plants um, right by it. And you know, there's some dryness, there's some problems, but overall it's really good and it's a healthy area. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Did you say that um, the canyon is not recognized by Global GFW? Yeah, so it's <laughs> recognized, like it's a, the city of San Diego protects the area, uh, so there are volunteers and, and there's like a, um, a protect, a, like a ranger's almost house there at the mm -hmm. canyon where they protect it, they maintain it, but it's not like a nationally uh, recognized or internationally recognized protected area. because Global Forest Link was especially focused on the tree cover and the tree health, it's a little bit um, more focused towards the trees, even though overall, you know, it's it's natural what's happening and it's not invading. But if we're just examining it from a perspective of tree health, you know, that is one thing that is contributing to tree death in the area. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying 